Hello everyone and welcome to my farm in Ireland. My name is Bruce Thompson and I am a real farmer. We are operating a spring block calving grass based production system. It could be defined as being intensive. I could talk about cows until they come home but what I really want to talk about today is a clean up crew that come into the paddock when the cows have left. My herd of 250 cows finished grazing this paddock yesterday, leaving behind them over 5 tonnes of cow poo. Sitting on top of the ground like this, they could be seen as a noxious weed, impeding grass growth, and they are a great home and breeding ground for flies and parasites. However, they are also an important nutrient source for grasses. However, they're not going to do much good in that state. So, this is when these guys come in. These guys consume the pats, burying it at the roots of the grass, along with all the parasites and fly eggs. The cow pat then is an important nutrient for grass growth and it's taken away off of the top of the soil leaving more room for grass to grow. Okay, so this little guy is called Fosser, um, a Fodius Fosser. I just caught him in one of my traps. And you can see he's quite young because if you look at what we call his tibia, which are his front feet, he has little spikes on it. And quite, his feet are quite long. As they get old and start digging and rooting, they actually wear down. So this guy is quite young. As some animal remedies have an adverse effects on dung beetle populations, we are using a more diagnostic approach when it comes to selecting when and what needs, needs to be used. So we've got an all sciencey. To reduce the need for wormers, we, we like to build up the animal's immune system when they're young. These are the most vulnerable animals on our farm. These are the young stock. Using our own mapping system, we allocate the least burdened pastures to the most vulnerable stock. These animals are kept moved regularly, so we invest in portable equipment such as this trough, feeder, fencing. These calves are given a small break of grass and they're moved regularly. This reduces the need for, for wormers in these animals and builds up their own natural resistance. This will stand for them for life. For fly control, we have moved away from using synthetic insecticides. We've been getting very good results on these young heifers here using Stockholm tar and eucalyptus oil.
Another area we focus on is habitat. And by that, I mean cow poo. You see, as we close our paddocks off in the autumn, leaving them rest until the springtime, our cows are not out depositing food for these dung beetles. The issue with this is, as they emerge in the autumn and the winter time, they have no food and no homes. Some of them will literally starve to death. So what we do over the winter time, we let out a few animals. It doesn't take a lot. They can go out full, they can be full before they leave the sheds. Let out five or six animals across the whole field like this for an afternoon. And they'll leave just enough for these dung beetles to survive. The more cows, the more dung pats. The more dung pats, the more dung beetles. Dung beetles are preyed on by badgers, foxes, small birds and bats. Small birds and bats are then eaten by large birds such as the buzzards that we have on our farm. This is ecology. With the benefits that dung beetles bring to agriculture as my subject, I received a Nuffield scholarship. And as part of this scholarship, I am collecting beetles and placing them into these enclosures here. The idea is that I collect spe different species, increase their populations and release them onto my farm to increase diversity. The result? Well, as our herd has increased with the abolition of milk quotas, our wormer usage has decreased by 90%. We have also seen an elimination of liver fluke, which was a serious problem on this farm. I'm giving that credit to the dung beetles. Thank you so much for visiting my farm. Please, please ask plenty of questions.